Lately, I've had a lot of requests from viewers who are looking for one-on-one -on -one training about Adobe Captivate, and clearly they're attempting to use responsive design, but without using breakpoints or without using fluid boxes. So they start a responsive design project simply placing objects on the screen just in the hopes that those objects will uh, position themselves and size themselves accordingly across a wide variety of different screen sizes. And, and I think this stems from a lack of understanding of the position panel, which is located in the properties panel. So I thought today I would go through it and kind of explain some of the basics there uh, so that you have a better understanding of how positioning objects that are, let's say, unlocked from fluid boxes or using breakpoint design, uh, you'll have a better idea of how those work. So let's start off with uh, background images. So I have a responsive design project. I've just started it here. I've imported a few things into my library to help with this tutorial, but I haven't added any fluid boxes and I've certainly not switched to breakpoint mode. So we'll just stick with this right here because this is what I'm seeing a lot of. If I go into my library and I've got uh, some images here to use, I've got this background image that has already been resized to be the same size as the desktop layout view, 1024 by 627. So if I select this object, go into my properties inspector and select the position tab, I can do a few things here. So first off, let's make it 0% from the top and we'll make it 0% from the left. So that looks good. It's centered on the slide and everything I think will work well. Now if I preview what this is going to look like on a wide variety of different screen sizes, you can instantly see where the problem is. If this is intended to be a background image, it's only on this smartphone view, only covering the top I don't know, 30% of the uh, of the slide here. And of course, that's going to be true regardless of what device you choose. So how do you fix that? Well, let's consider some of the things that are on our position panel. So positioning is fine. Object size seems to be where the problem is. So we're going to look in here. So this is presently set to be auto height and 100% width. So the image is going to resize depending on the width of that screen size. And the height is simply going to automatically choose the appropriate reciprocal aspect ratio dimension, if you will. Uh, that sounds more complicated than it needs to be. If I was to change this to 100%, uh, which I could do, the problem lies there that everything's going to squash down. It sure will fill the background, but it's distorting that image. So that's not an appropriate solution either. Let's try this instead. 100% height will certainly cover all those different devices, but why don't we try setting the width to be auto and see what happens there. So we can resize this. Now you can see the size of the screen here. Uh, and this seems to be a good choice. In fact, here's a tip for you. If you select uh, anywhere in your scrap area or the slide on the film strip, you can see the properties inspector for the slide. If you want to get a preview of the actual dimensions or the size of the slide, you can just check this preview height option here, and that will show you this little yellow outline uh, to give you an idea of how that background is going to cover the slide in question. So the slide becomes rather tall and narrow and it seems to work well. But maybe, you know, in this case here, we don't want it uh, aligned with the screen of the laptop computer. Instead, we want to see the notepad and the pen. So we can go back to our objects uh, properties inspector, go to the position panel, and instead of aligning this to the left edge of the slide, we can change that to the right edge of the slide and this is what happens instead. So now we'll always see the pen and the, and the notepad there and that might be a more appropriate choice. One other option that you have of course is the ability to align to the center of the image. So again when you resize this uh, it'll be centered. You'll see some of the keyboard. You'll see some of the notepad 
maybe that's an appropriate choice. The next thing I want to talk about is adding your company logo. Most of you work for some kind of corporation and there's probably all these rules about using the company logo. It must be a certain size. It must be positioned in a particular spot on the screen. There has to be so many pixels around it and that sort of thing. Well, fortunately, the position panel within uh, Adobe Captivate is very well suited for setting that up. You just need to know what those fields do and how they can affect your logo. So in this case here, let's go into my, my library where I have an example of a company logo here. And I'll just bring this onto the screen. Let's first of all uh, take a look at what we can do with the position of it. So the first thing is, is that many company brands have rules about how far from the edge of a document, or in this case, a slide, that logo will appear. And we're going to place this in the upper right hand corner. And uh, maybe it's a certain percentage right? That's a possibility. But more than likely, it's probably a number of pixels. It can only be, let's say, 10 pixels from the top. And we're going to do the same thing to the right-hand side where we're going to position it. So we're going to change the position from left to right here, and we're going to choose pixels. And again, we'll do the same 10 pixels. So it's always in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, the other thing, too, that we might want to choose to do is decide what uh, or how large this object will appear on the slide. So this is rather large. Uh, maybe they've got rules that say the image can only be 15% of the slide width, for example. So we can type that number in here and that's going to force it to be a certain size. Auto height's a good choice here because obviously we want to use auto when we want to maintain aspect ratio. Just like to point out that Adobe does provide a nice little job aid to understand what these values are and how they should be used. So here, for example, is percentage. You would choose this unit if the uh, if the dimension or position is going to be a percentage of the stage width or height. Pixel is if you want a fixed size or position. Auto, of course, this will maintain aspect ratio. That's what we're talking about there. And if you're working with two or more objects that need to overlay and maintain their position with one another, you would use percentage relative. So let's get back to our logo here. So we've got a 15% width, so it's no longer going to uh, fill up half the screen as it did when it started. Auto height's going to take care of that. And let's just resize this down to maybe smartphone view and see what it looks like. Well, you can see one of the problems right off the bat. That logo becomes very small, very tiny on the screen. In fact, if you hover your mouse over it, you can see that it's only 48 pixels by 33 pixels. So maybe your company has a rule that, you know, while it's supposed to be 15% of the width of the screen, it's not to be represented uh, less than 70 pixels wide. So we can type that value in here. And just a word of caution, if your height is set to auto, you don't want to really set a minimum height. You really want to set the minimum width to be uh, something that's dynamic like this one here. So in this case here, let's say we don't want that logo to be anything less than 75 pixels wide. So now when we resize it, there's a point where it stops shrinking and maintains that size. And again, you can hover over it and see that it's 75 pixels wide by 52 tall. And that works out rather well. The other thing people seem to struggle with is adding um, objects such as shapes or text captions and having them work as well. So I'll give you an example of where I've seen this been a problem before. Someone might decide to create a, um, let's say, a, a next button at the bottom of their slide here. We'll just uh, write the word next in there. And uh, maybe we'll bump up, bump up the font just a tad bit here so it's nice and large. And uh, as it is right now, if I resize this, of course, you can see it becomes very small on, on mobile view, on smartphone view. 
So if you want to, again, use this style of uh, responsive design, you might want to select that object, go over to your position panel, and take a look at the settings. Now in this case, it's near the bottom, so in fact, you might want to actually align it to the bottom. Maybe it's only going to be 5% from the bottom, that's fine. And rather than aligning it with the left, it probably makes more sense to align it with the right-hand side here. Uh, and in this case here, maybe we'll choose also 5%. That seems like a good spot for it. Or again, you could, you could make sure it's aligned with that logo. We could choose uh, pixels. And again, uh, you know, in the case of the logo, it's 10 pixels. So to maintain a, a very specific 10 pixel margin, you could do that as well here. In this case here, uh, having it shrink its height may not be an appropriate choice. So let's turn these around. Let's change this to percentage and let's change this to auto and see what the results of that are. Well, that's probably a little bit more appropriate. Uh, and again, it gives, you, it gives you much better control of the next button size. And that might be, you know, very appropriate for the different sizes. Incidentally, you also have uh, a line center horizontally on the, on the slide and a line center vertically on the slide. And you can use those depending on what object you're creating. So maybe a next button might be more appropriate in the center like that. And that looks quite nice. In fact, in this case here, you might even choose to have a very specific pixel set at uh, 50 pixels, and maybe the width is set at a percentage of the screen size. So in this case here, maybe 30%. So in this case here, the, the next button will shrink appropriately with that, that screen size there. So again, that gives you a good idea of how you can use that position panel to your advantage. Let's create another slide here, and I'm going to show you another scenario where using those uh, minimum pixel counts uh, can be to your advantage as well. So if I have an object like, let's say, this map of Canada here on my slide, let's just, uh, let's just set that up to be centered. And this works out really well here. So I have uh, auto height and I've got 100% width. So here's where the problem comes in. That, that map of Canada becomes very small when I get to smartphone size. And maybe I want to illustrate something that's quite small on the map here. So again, using that, that minimum width of pixels might be to your advantage here. So if you wanted to pick a point where you didn't want this to go, let's say, any smaller than this size here, you can see, well, that width is 695, um, maybe a little bit smaller. Let's try 600 and see what happens here. You know, if this works out that you're willing to crop a little bit of the image on either side, maybe that's to your advantage. So here, if I'm focusing on the province of Ontario where I'm from, Cutting a little bit off of BC and the East Coast is probably not a big deal. So that might be a better use of the of the, the slide space as well, because of course I'm chopping off what is mostly white space anyway, so it's not a big deal. Anyway, that gives you a few different ways that you can look at the position panel and deal with some of the choices there, and I hope you find that helpful. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.